Yeah, we bought the show. We fucking gave us his cat play too much again. He made sign out in verse 22. We'll talk to you about Amen, Jacob. Amen. And I love what Pastor Tim Walker said. Amen. Notice that uh, God did always call Jacob Israel. Call him Jacob at times. Amen. But it's because God is God over your Jacobs and over your Israels. Amen. Over your successes and over your failures. Over who you are, who you were. Jacob was one of the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob was favored by his mother while Esau, his twin, was favored by his dad. When Isaac was close to death, he asked Esau to hunt and to kill some wild game for him so he could eat it. Amen. With the promise that when he returned, Isaac would bless Esau. In the Old Testament blessings, amen, there's a father that gave out the blessings, that the promising words of inheritance and prophesying over the future of their sons, amen. But while Esau was out hunting, Rebekah helped Jacob disguise himself and tricked Isaac. Mm. Rebekah heard, amen, that, you know, that's what he wanted to do. So he told Jacob, hey, go get me a kid, a, a kid, a goat, amen, and I'll make it, amen, and we're, we're going to fool your dad. Basically, the same because dad couldn't see. He couldn't see, amen. He, he was, uh, you know, he was legally blind, amen. <laughs> he burned the seed. In the Old Testament, amen, so he, he did that, amen, and, and, and what happened was, you know, even, but even Isaac, um, in, in his blindness in the time, man, he, he wanted to be sure, so he did what he could to try to confirm that it was Esau, you know, but he was disguised. The mom put some, you know, some uh, 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 fur on his arms because Jacob was smooth-skinned and Esau was, you know, was a hairy man. And so, you know, they were trying to disguise him, and it worked. It worked. But you see, before that, before all that happened, they met Esau went hunting one day. And when he came back, there's Jacob right there making some porridge, amen, making some lentil soup. And Esau was so hungry that he said, man, you know, make me some, uh, give me some of your soup. And Jacob, man, being the supplanter he is, the conniver he is, he said, hey, what will you give me? He said, man, what, what, what do you want? He said, sell me your birthright. Now the birthright was this, he was the oldest, he was he was destined to receive everything. That was his birthright as the oldest. He was to receive everything. But he despised his birthright. Amen. If you despise your birthright, your birthright is that you and I were born again to the kingdom of God. Mm. See, you should have said amen right there, man. Yeah. Because, you know, you were born into the kingdom of God. You were born in amen. You were born again, amen, under the king's order, amen. You are now, amen, an heir to the throne of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, there you go again, amen. amen. You're, you're missing it because you're it's taking not... it so lightly, amen. You don't understand. The enemy had it for you. Let me put it to you this way. You were destined for hell. Oh, hey. And you did everything you could to get there in a hurry. <laughs> You drank yourself to death. You took drugs. You broke the law. You slept around. You spent. You overworked. You got money. You got this. You got that. You were destined, amen, and you were on your way really quick. And God said, man, in his wisdom, his mercy, and his grace said, pick that one out. Pick that one out of my Christ. And I'm sure the angel said, this one? Yes, that one. And now you are born again into the kingdom of God. Amen. Join heirs with Christ. Where people saw you as nothing more than just an arrogant, man, a high, a, a lofty, a, a drug addict, an alcoholic, a, a, you name it, man. That's all they saw of you, but Christ saw more. Amen. Christ saw more. Amen. And if you despise your birthright, you will sell it for anything, even a bowl of soup. Brother, will you give up your your salvation for a million dollars? Heck no, Pastor. How about ten million? No way. What about a six pack on a hot day? Maybe. How about that skirt? How about brother body? How about all these things, amen, that don't cost ten million dollars, but you'd rightly give it yourself up for? Before we judge Esau in a bowl of soup, amen, how about ourselves, man? What, what were we willing to give up in the times of our troubles, in the times, amen, where we were weak, where we were famished, where we didn't want to serve God anymore? What did the devil put in front of you? What, you know, I love what Justice Friend said, what did the devil offer you for your salvation? 
easy to serve God when we're in church or we're high. Oh, man, everything's going good. Amen. But what about when you don't get your way? What about when God says, hold on a minute? What if God says, wait a second? What if God said, trust me? Here, amen, Esau could have just easily said, you want my birthright? No way, man. Look, man, I'll go to my neighbors, man. I ask for a piece of bread. I'll be all right. Man, why are you always wanting stuff, man? But he said, hey, what good is my birthright to me that I'm dying? He's not dying. He's hungry. You come off a three-day, four-day, five-day, 21-day, 40-day fast, man. You're starving, man. You think that you're going to die. Preach. The thing that will, you know, it will, you, I'll tell you this right now, man. You know, when the first day when you start fasting, you start thinking what you're going to break it with. Amen. When you don't get that, man, it's like, you know, nah, that didn't satisfy me. You end up eating more. People say, man, do you fast fast? I say, yes, I do. He said, don't let the weight fool you, man. Hey, after I'm done fasting, I eat. <laughs> you know, if, if you're wondering why I'm not thin, because I fast, amen, because I eat after I fast, amen, and I eat well, glory to God, hallelujah, but this is the story of Jacob, and now, amen, he's older, and what happened was, amen, Esau found out about it, and his mom said, hey, you got to take off, he's going to kill you, he hates you right now, he's going to kill you, so he takes off, amen, to his uncle Laban's place. Uncle Laban, amen, was a better hustler than Jacob. Can't con the con man. And here he is, amen, and, uh, and he, falls, he falls in love, amen, with his, with his would-be wife. And, man, and, and, and his uncle, man, tricks him, man. He said, hey, what do I need to do, man, to get her for my wife? I worked for me seven years. He works for seven years to give his little sister instead, or the older sister instead. Now, the, the, uh, uh, the, the Bible says, amen, I think her name is Rachel, amen, hallelujah, I got too much stuff in my head. But he says, fair-eyed, amen. Now, some commentators said that she was cross-eyed. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's because, you know, she was, you know, she was always, she needed glasses, you know. But that's not the woman he wanted. Wanted uh, Rachel, amen, uh, 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 yeah, amen, hallelujah, forgive me. Thank you, Amen. <laughs> And anyway, but he gets caught. So now, amen, he gets his two wives, amen, and, and, and he want, he needs to go back. He wants to go back home, but he has to pass through Esau's territory. He has to pass through the enemy's territory to get home. You have to go through hell, man, if you want to make it to heaven. But it's not a journey worth fearing. It's not a journey worth being afraid of. It's a journey, amen, it's an experience to behold, to be loved, to be embraced. Man, walk this life and enjoy the life that God has given you. Man. I don't know why I'm using this. <laughs> Can you hear me? There And <laughs> enjoy the life that God has given you. And here he is, amen, so he, he goes and it's time for him, amen, to confront it's time for him, amen, to face the music. He's about ready to face, amen, Esau. Esau was a mighty, mighty warrior. And how many know, man, when you have, man, family is an enemy, <laughs> they don't forgive very well. Neither do they forget. I remember what you did back to me, man, in 1964. And I remember what you did, man. I remember, yeah, you owe me 20 bucks from 1972. <laughs> you know, they don't forget. And neither did Esau, amen. So verse 22 of chapter 20, 32 of Genesis, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, 11 sons, and crossed the fort of Jacob. Verse 23 says, after he sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. He said everything else. He had nothing, nothing. God will bring you to a place of nothing. Mm. Lord. Because in a place of nothing, you have nothing to listen to but God. Mm. That's true. I have never been in jail. I heard you have a lot of time to think in jail. That's all you do. I have been, amen, six months uh, or or. or 90 days 
in the middle of the ocean with no landing site. And 24 hours, you see nothing but water all around you. Oh, no, thank you. Do what you got to do, say what you got to say, but at the end of the day, man, you wake up, there's water. You, woke, you go to sleep, you wake up, there's water. You go to sleep, there's water, and everything in between is water. One minute you'd wake up and the water would be calm and like glass, smooth glass. There's no waves, no ripple, and you're wondering when is tsunami going to hit. And then the next morning, amen, you wake up to a storm. Waves are 400, well, 50, 100 feet high. And so, amen, uh, and there, there's a time when you just think yourself in the time of calmness, what am I doing here? In the time of storm, what am I doing here? What am I doing in this church? What am I doing serving God? What am I doing here? And here he is alone. This time, man, he's got nobody. He's got no wife. He's got no children. He's got no possessions. He's got nothing. Some of you are so afraid to be alone with God, but you think because you think he's going to slam you, amen, uh, like WWE. You think that he's going to take a chair to your back. You think that he's going to do, man, some harm to you. But some of you, amen, will stay, will stay alone with God and all you do is talk, 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 talk. Yeah, my Lord. Yeah, my Lord. Yeah, my God. Yeah, my God. God this. God that. Yeah. And God said, would you let me get in the word wise? Would you shut up for a moment? That's what God says to me. <laughs> shut up for a second. I know what's going on. Shut up and let me hear. Let me speak to you. But here he is, amen, when the man, so Jacob was left alone, and he wrestled, and the man wrestled with him until daybreak. Wrestled with him until daybreak. So that means this guy, when man started wrestling with him at nighttime. There have been times when God has dealt with me, amen, from one in the morning to I have to get up, amen, at six, man, and I just pray, just pray, just pray. What are you praying for? Everything. Everything. I'm letting it all out. He's letting me have it. Everything. He says, why can't these people change? Why can't I change? Why can't we change? Why can't my brother change? Why can't, why are you? And pray and get it out of God. And God just tell me, because you're trying to do what only my word can do. It's my word that can do it. Not you. You're trying to change yourself. And yet you have not, not any room for my word to do anything in you. You read it. That people, man, tell me, quote me, man, you read it, but you don't get it. You get it, and then you use it wrong. You use it, you don't use it on the enemy. You use it on yourself. Oh, man, this is me. Oh, I'm all bad. Oh, this is all bad. Oh, God, this is all bad. I don't know why you even... Oh, you use it on each other. God, amen. Jacob, I should say, wrestled with a man until daybreak. Wrestled until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, this is how desperate Jacob was, man. He's about ready to lose his life. He's about ready to lose everything he made under the hand of Esau, his brother. I look at my I look at my two grandsons, Carmelo and Anthony, and Anthony Carmelo sometimes, man, he'll like man, he'll butter up his brother. Hey brother. <laughs> come here, brother, come here, come here, brother. You know, Anthony, a big brother in the years. Kate, you want some waffles? I'll show you how to make waffles. Yeah. You know when Kate gets bored making waffles, Anthony will have to finish the waffles. <laughs> you know? And that's his big brother. That's his, you know, that's his little brother. When they get older, amen, if you miss with one, you miss with the other. When Tamir comes up, amen, you miss with one, you miss with the others, amen. When Lila gets up, if you mess with them all, she's going to beat you down. <laughs> that little girl is ruthless, man. She's scary. She'll hear, she'll hear Tamir cry. She'll go to the crib and shish. <laughs> shish. <laughs> she can't even reach it. Shish. I'm like, man, wait till you grow up. I'm scared. She'll be a man. Don't do that to your brother. Ain't no cousins anymore, man. She's the mom. Yeah. 
But he says here, amen, that he could not overpower him. Imagine the, 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 the rest of that. I will not let you go. You know, and he says here, and he says that he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so his hip was wrenched as he wrestled him. It still didn't cause him to let him go. Man, he was injured. He was bad. He was bruised. Amen. He was like, oh, man. Oh, man. You cheated. You cheated. Some of you I know were fighters in the world. I know you were. Because your testimony says so. Amen. That you, man, you did that. You, and so you were fighters. You didn't care about the numbers. Man, you know, it was 20 of them and one of you. Hey, man. All right. No problem. I'll get it. It's a good day for a beat down. <laughs> So you gotta understand, man, the generation I grew up, hey man, it was a beatdown. Nobody came back with a gun. You just got a beatdown. That was it. You open your mouth, you took it outside, his friends jump you, you got a beatdown. <laughs> you go back to your friends, what happened? They beat me down. Let's go catch one of them. <laughs> there was no gun, there was no knives, hey man, it was just fight. You talked about it the rest of the week. Where'd you get that black guy? Oh, man, they beat me down. And you know it was only like, you know, two grannies, man, and their blind dog. <laughs> <laughs> but they fought like 20 dudes. <laughs> so when the man said, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, and his hip reached out, it says here, 26, he said, then the man said, let me go for it's daybreak. Let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you, unless you bless me. I will not stop unless you bless me. Listen to that, those words. I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not stop. But, hey, I may be wrestling with you. Right now, I may not even feel like being here. Right now, man, I'm, I'm, I'm having an issue with my family. Right now, I'm having an issue with my friends. Right now, I'm having issues here. But I will not stop serving you. I cannot stop serving you. I will cling to you. I will wrestle with you. And man, maybe God is just telling you, man, say, hey, you don't want me to take a No, no, I'm not going to take a break until you bless me. Mm. I need your blessing, Lord. I need you. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. And here, he says, here, he says, well, what is your name? The man asked, what is your name? Jacob answered, and he said, and the man said, your name is no longer Jacob, it's a planner, the conniver, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and overcome. You have struggled and overcome. You have fought, amen, and overcome. The Bible says that we are overcomers. But very few of us believe that we are overcomers, especially in the times, amen, when we need to wrestle out ourselves. Some commentaries say, man, yeah, Jacob was wrestling with the inner parts of himself. He was wrestling with God. And God was showing him, man, this is where you find out what you're made of. This find out if you're going to, you know, what your steel is made of. You know, anywhere you go, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter uh, whether you're in the army, whether you're from the neighborhood, where you are. But sooner or later, you know, the, the thing is that when, when you get trained for war, it's easy to shoot at a target. He's not shooting back. And it's easy to get a bullseye because you're taking your time. Oh, yeah, okay, hold on. Hold on. Stop moving. Okay. <laughs> well, when bullets are flying back at you, man, you're not really like, okay, well, hold on, hold on, man. You're like, <laughs> and you're running, man. But it's time. You won't really know what your steel is made of until time of adversary. As they say, amen, you know, our times don't produce character, it reveals your character. Mm. It reveals who you are at that time. And I've had times in my life, church, being truthful with you, I had folded. I've gotten scared out of my mind. I've sat on my bed weeping because I was worried. I was scared. Things were coming and happening. Amen. Things were just taking place, man, and I was just losing it. And God let me through that. And at the end, amen, it's just feel better. I said, no, because I am still scared. I am still frightened. This thing I've never faced before, this this demon I've never, I've never even heard of before, I've never even seen before. Why did you let this one slip through to get me? 
Right now, man, I'm shaking in my boots. It would be like, man, uh, you man, all I got is a butter knife, man, and they got some machine guns. And I got nowhere to cover. What am I to do? What am I to do, man? You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I can make it out of this one. That was my character at that point in time. Finally, amen, when all said and done, amen, and everything else is just mad, and I'm there, and all my crying is done, my tears are dried up, amen, uh, my heart came back to me. And the Lord said, take the butter knife, put it in front of you, and as they fire, as comical as it sounds, mm -hmm. as they fire, swing at the bullets, and none will touch it. This is what I do. God is able, amen, to work the supernatural in our deepest point. But are we willing to wrestle? Are we willing to wrestle? He says to Jacob, amen, then he takes his name from Jacob. He changed, just a mere name change. Just a mere name change, guys. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Just a mere name change. You're no longer called Spooky from the neighborhood. Your name is Robert. Your real name is Robert. That's why I ask people, man, hey, what's your name, man? They call me, they call me Dynamite. <laughs> Boo, what's your real name? Sam. Man, your name is Sam. You're coming to the house of God. You're not spooky. You're Robert. You're a child of God. You're a king's kid. Amen. That's why a lot of times, again, we have trouble, don't we? We, we, we don't associate us with being king's kids. Mm. We don't associate ourselves even being a man and woman of God. But I'm a man of God, man. I don't, I don't fall for that. Come on. I'm a woman of God, man. I don't, I don't fall for that. Man. You know, and some of you, amen, were even graduating to things, amen, that God has you to do in your walk. You're a prophet of God. You're an evangelist for God. You're a preacher for God. Man. You're a teacher. You're an apostle. We throw those names out like they're nothing, but you know what? That's the label that God gave you when you came in the house of God, and your destiny is upon it, amen. And they 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 call it, and you know who's that? They said, man, it, it was a trip because when my kids, amen, Anthony and, and Nicole were small, they would call their son and say, that's my teacher. That's my commander, that's my warrior radio commander. They didn't just call him, amen, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, brother this, man, they called commander, so and so. Teacher, so and so. That was the label, amen, that they had on them because that's who they were in the kingdom of God. Who are you in the kingdom of God? Oh, I'm just here. No, you're not just here. Amen. You cannot be just here, not in this fellowship. That's why you were brought here to this fellowship. You're just not sitting here. She's just not Sister Ruth. She's not just Sister Andy. She's just not Sister Jenny. He's not Brother Mikey. He may, he's not Brother Jeff. There's a destiny. There's a label that God has put on you. It's called your calling. What are you being a part of the worship team? Then that's what you do. You worship. You lead people into worship. Tell the devil, amen, I'm no longer that name that they used to call me. I'm no longer, amen, uh, man that drove me that alcohol. I'm no longer that bluesy. I'm a woman. I'm a child of God, amen. Oh. So God has something for me. Amen. Once you get that, I was telling Brother Joey, amen, you don't understand. The things that God has given you, you fought for. You wrestled all night for. You read you, you fought for it. Do you know how many altars I had to build up to the Lord and how many I tore down because of my foolishness and build them back up again? Do you know how many tears? Do you know how many times, man, I wanted to leave my wife, my children, the ministry, God? But I stood in it because there's no way that you're going to get me out of this blessing. <laughs> Do you know what it's like, amen, uh, man, to look and think to yourself, man, I failed. I failed, and you didn't even start yet. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've fought for this. I mean, God's gone if the devil's going to come, amen, and steal this from me. Oh, 
Has he tried? Oh, you bet. And the things he's tried with, man, were so, oh, man, they were good. <laughs> oh, man, they were good. But don't be alarmed. That's what he tempts you with. He doesn't tempt you with anything ugly. He's not going to tempt me, man. I got a wife, I got family, I got my children, I got my grandchildren. He's not going to tempt me with, you know, with a, with a dog. <laughs> and say, hey, look, you want to give that dog a, you know, you love to say your family? What are you crazy? But all of a sudden, he throws in, what about if I give you a chance to run away from a different country? They'll never find you. <laughs> they wouldn't even exist. You can just go away. They'll never look for you here. You know, no, you can say, say you can go to like Montana. Montana, what the heck's in Montana? That's it. Nobody knows. You don't understand. See, some people only men are readily to give it up because they don't have. The idea, I'm gonna say, Mom. But just like anything else, if you're from the neighborhood, you gave yourself to that neighborhood, yes? You took bullets, yes? You took life threatening things, huh? Including your children, you sacrificed your children, yes? Well, if you're educated, amen, you spent some time studying, yeah? Burn the midnight oil, trying to get that A, trying to get that, that, that work in at two in the morning? Yeah? Huh? You, 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 you pay for it, right? Huh? You, for your education, for your shopping deal, then you work overtime. You gave yourself over and over again. Why? Because you want a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar pair of shoes, red bottoms. I just heard about them. That's all I know about them. <laughs> you know, and they, they, you know, they said that red bottoms are supposed to be that you only wear them during carpet events. I don't. So be it. But you know, you, 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 you spent your life on them, right? Yeah? Yeah. So, in the things of God, should we spend our lives on these things then? Should we hear it all on these things then? Amen. So, when the enemy tries to come and steal it from us, we say, hey, you have no idea. Heads off. You have no idea what I was. You have no idea the battle I have to go through to get this. See, he says here, amen. He goes on, 29. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? My name. Then he blessed him there. So, why do you ask my name? See, the reason why he didn't want to give his name is because he didn't want Jacob to get big-headed. Man, I made the Lord surrender. I even made him tell me his name. In other words, I made him cry uncle. Uh -huh. No, you didn't make him cry uncle. See, he woke up early. He was unable to sleep. He went to the fort of the, of the brook and by nighttime was by himself. And having all these things, he returned... And he just prayed. He was just praying. God, help me. Amen. He wrestled with the man. He wrestled with this mysterious man. He wrestled with him. Amen. He wrestled with this angel. Some of the most commentators agree, amen, that it was Christ, amen, incarnated, amen, into a, into a man to deal with, with Jacob. And he's there, guys. He's there. And he's fighting. And he's fighting. And he tells him, I will not let you go except thou bless me. And it's evident that Jacob was aware of character. He knew who he was talking to. Don't we know who we're praying to? Um. Do you know who you're praying to? I love the, the Bible study that my wife was giving him about prayer. The men took a, a different role. Amen. We're, we're, we're becoming, we're, we're learning to become men of God. You should be a men of God. You know, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> There's more in time than anything. You know, I love when, when, when I hear women say, well, you have no idea what it's like to be a woman. I'm looking at them going, well, you have no idea what it's like to be a man. What's a big deal? I'm glad I don't know what it's like to be a woman. Otherwise, I would be called, hmm, oh, a woman. <laughs> you know, and, and it's the thing, church, amen, well, we have to, I mean, in, in, in wrestling with God, there's always a positive with God. There's always a positive. Listen to me. There's always a positive with God. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. When you wrestle with God, there's always a positive at the end. Check this out. Okay. The fight is fixed. He knows he'll let you win. He will let you win. Oh, you're not getting it. No. See, you can wrestle with God, but he already knows he'll let you win. He just wants to know how far you want to wrestle. See, 
Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, that's yeah. The amount of distance that you want to wrestle is the amount of blessings that you will receive. Yeah. If you only want to wrestle one round, you get one round of blessing. That's it. That was easy. Uh-huh. Oh, wrestling for a healing. Shit, healing? Come on. When I heard Hagen say, man, I'm walking with the divine e- healing. And I said, that's what I want. Man. Divine healing. What does that mean? That none of my family, amen, to down to when Jesus comes back, will ever need a physician. Thank you, Jesus. If they have a fever, lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus, that fever is leaving. And by man, by supper time, man, they're out playing. Pray over the man. You're going to go play football? Good. In the name of Jesus, you will not get hurt. Hey, yeah, that's a good one. You come back, amen, sore. You come back bruised, but you didn't come back with anything broken. Thank you, Jesus. The amount of time you want to wrestle will be determined, amen, the blessings that you'll have. Mm-hmm. If you only want to play, pray 10 minutes and wrestle for 10 minutes, well, you know, you get 10 minutes. Huh. It's like putting a coin to the, the, the parking meter, right? You put a dime in, you only get five minutes. Huh. Then you have to keep running back. <laughs> there was a time when we went to the alleys, amen, the homeless people would watch a meter, amen, for like two bucks or something. We just give them the change, you just give them the money. And believe it or not, they're pretty trustworthy because they want money. You know? They're not going to like, you know, you're going to give them a dollar, amen, say, so, okay, when I get back and you're still here, I'm going to give you five. They're not going to run away with your one dollar. Hell, man. They'll put in one, the, the thing when you come back, amen, and say, hey, we're here. Yeah. Wow. In the Philippine Islands, man, you know, if you want to hire a gym, you have to just sit them with 20. They're the dearest for the rest of the day. Wow, yeah. The amount of things that what you want to give up is the amount of thing, amen, that God will bless you with. Now, here, here's the thing, amen, uh, when you wrestle with God or when you want to, man, to, to, to have these things bestowed upon you, there is a way to wrestle. You got to go out in reckless abandon, man. Now, I know, amen, we watch this WWE, WWF, you know, Nick Black, whoever wrestling nowadays, I don't know. I have no idea, amen. But my dad used to love wrestling. And my mom used to say, let him watch wrestling, would you? It's a way that gets out his aggression. <laughs> and now, back then, I mean, these guys were huge still, amen. But, you know, is wrestling fake? The guy weighs 350,000 pounds. <laughs> and he takes his fist and he hits you across the face with it, man. You're just there going like that? Yes, it is. <laughs> but gravity is still real. So when they fall like 10, 5, 10, 15 feet up the air and slam on you, yeah, it's got to hurt a little bit. So there is a mile, amen, in reality. But here it is, amen, this wrestling that is for real, that when you entangle yourself with God, God will entangle himself with you. Every now and then he'll tell you you're doing a good job. Hey, let me go. Oh, I got him. I got him. But then there'll be a time, amen, when God will tell you, okay, I'm going to get ready to bless you. But I'm not going to let you forget this blessing. He touches, amen, Jacob's hip. Now, if you know the anatomy of the body, the hip stands for stability. When your hip goes, you know, you're kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> you're kind of not stable. So your hip, man, stands for stability. So when when God touched the hip of his socket, he put him on a joint. Now that sinew, that, that part right there, amen, it's a very powerful sinew. As a matter of fact, amen, when hunters uh, at a time, when they would take that off, they would actually use it to bind things together because it was very, very, really, really strong. So God touched that sinew. It signifies strength. Your hip, your. So what did he do? He took away Jacob's strength. And he made him walk with a limp. Amen. Signifying that you know what? You will always rely on me for everything now. You rely on me in your travels. When God gets ready to bless you, amen, you're going to walk away with a limp. You're going to walk away with a limp because God does not want you to forget. You wrestled with me and you prevailed and you were blessed. Now take this blessing and do not forget who it came, where it came from, who gave it to you, and what you use it for. Amen. Some of you will bestow gifts, amen, of prophecy. Don't look at me like that. 
Some of you remember what sold gifts, amen, of teaching, of preaching. Some of you bestowed gifts, amen, that God wants you to use. Your limb is your fear, but that's not that's not the limb that God gave you. You need a healing for that. Your lip will be your humility, amen, to give glory. It's me. It's me. You'll always have that. Which is good because now you're relying on who? God. God. Your lip, amen, will always be God. Is this you? Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. Because <laughs> I don't want to go by me. When you start walking with a lip, when you stop walking with the reliance of God, amen, when you think that you can walk on your own, oh, that hip will be touched again. Don't forget, it's me. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. How long you want to wrestle, and when He touches you, when He blesses you, then He'll make you. You will remember. You will remember. Jacob, from that point on, Amen. Walked with the King, and I'm sure when he sat down, man, and then his kids asked him, "Hey, when did you start walking with the King?" Hey, let me tell you the story, man. <laughs> See, your uncle Esau was about ready to kill me. Ah. Get out, Dad. Uncle Esau is great, man. He could just go to the cow and everything. Man, he's a good uncle. So, no, you understand, boy. I stole his birthright. Yes. What? Tell us more. <laughs> Start sharing his testimony. Here it is, church. Amen. You see, God wanted to do something more to Jacob than just simply give him. He wanted him, amen, to be part of the promise that God gave Abraham. See, every and every single one of you, amen, was a promise. Amen. And each and every single one of you is to fulfill your part of that promise. What is our part? To populate heaven. Yes. Yes. And snap close to you. And God has blessed you and ordained you to do just that. By what? By what Brother Abel said last night. The power of our testimony. See, if you hold your testimony dear, you're not going to give it up to any devil that's, that offers you a bowl of lentil soup. Amen. Amen. Let me finish up. And then he says here, amen, he touches his head, he, 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 he does all that, but he also does this, amen, he says, what is your name? He says, my name is Jacob, so your name is no longer Jacob, and I told you, just the name change alone, amen, will give you power, just you believing that you're no longer this individual, but now you're a woman, you're a man of God, amen, it, it, it gets you to a place because your words, amen, they speak life into you, I no longer do that because that's no longer me, that's no longer who I am. He says here, amen, uh, man, and he, and he tells them, man, you know, you're no longer called Jacob, but Israel. You're no longer called that. Why? Because when God gets a hold of you, all things become you. That means all things become you. That means all, guys. Amen, yes. It means your way of thinking, your way of walking. Now you're walking with a limp. Got you. What's up, Nixon, man? Just walking with Jesus, man. <laughs> Just walking with Jesus, man. Just walking with Jesus. Because people do see a different way you walk. Huh? You no longer have that show, but you have that walk of dignity, man. They're, they, that's why they ask you, man, hey, what's up with you, man? There's something different about you. What's the way you walk, man? You don't walk, man, into trouble. You walk away from trouble. You don't walk into things that you used to do, amen. You walk to God. There's a, there's a way you walk. All things become you. The words that come out of your mouth, you can't help, man. You, you, man. Sooner or later, man, it's going to turn godly. Your conversations, and, and man, and you begin to talk to somebody at work or at school, and then amen will come out. Yeah. Hey, amen, brother. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new man. It's a new woman in me. Before I used to say black this, black that, black yeah. Now I was like, man, praise God, that's a great idea. We should do that for our plans. Praise God. <laughs> man, what's up with you? <laughs> you know, all things become you. <laughs> now, for those of you that like to hang on to your past and hang on to those things and try to use that as a, as a what do you call that, as an ace in the pocket for when God wants you to do something, you're like, yeah, but Lord, look at me. 
said, I've taken your sins and cast them as far as the east as to the west, down to the bottom of the ocean. Why do you keep bringing them back up? Yeah. Why do you keep bringing back your failures? You love living your failures? No. Then come back to the wrestling ring because we're going to wrestle some more. Oh, Lord. We're going to wrestle until you get that out of you. I'm scared. Huh? I'm scared. See, and, and then, and, and to make matters even better, amen, the, book, the word of the Lord says, amen, that you'll make a door in the valley of Acor for you. Now, the valley, the valley of Acor is your lowest point. Uh-huh. Well, he says, you'll make a door that when you step through, man, you'll see on the other side the blessings of God because you've been into that valley. Wow. Huh? The Valley of Echo. This is when you get there, when you step to the other side, you're gonna, everybody's going to see when you step over. Jacob asked him, tell me thy name. The request was denied that he may not be big-headed. Hmm. Remember, when the devil said, thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. He says, man, you will not take the Lord your God. And the thing of the matter is, church, amen, that, that limp, and I'll close, I'm closing, amen, that limp that Jacob, that, that the Lord gave him, amen. It is also, amen, for us to be humble, knowing that we need to do it in ourselves. St. Corinthians 12, I think, uh, he, he, uh, Paul, amen, asked the Lord, amen, to, to, to remove the thorn in his flesh three times. He said, man, no, I'm going to leave it there to buffet you, to make you not big-headed. Believe me, I need that. Because sometimes things that, that, that the Lord has me do, man, and I see a great man, it's easy for the devil to come up to me. He, look what you did. And I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. Let uh-huh. <laughs> me lay my hands on the sick and they recover. God used me, man, so that they can recover. Amen. Well, how does he use? He, man, he uses people around me to make sure that I stay humble. My wife, for one. I'm not saying, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not, that's not a put down, man. That's, that's a reality. Because listen to me. Musicians are a funny bunch. <laughs> we can come to the church and not learn how to spell guitar. Don't even know what it looks like. Pick up a pair of drumsticks and hold them like they were chopsticks because we didn't know what to do with them. <laughs> Pray and fast to the Lord and ask God to give us the ability to learn. Now back then I didn't have YouTube. Yeah. So it was all trial and error. A lot of ridicule, a lot of this, so far, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? God gave me the ability to play. And there been times, amen, where I feel just the anointing of God coming through my fingers, man, and I'm shredding that thing like there was no yesterday. Even musicians are coming up to me and going, man, how long have you been playing? Two weeks. What? Wow, thank you, Jesus. What, are you crazy? I can walk away through, I can walk away through this door that used to be, man, one of these things that you put up. And I couldn't fit because my head was so big. Oh, wow. But there's my beautiful wife. What do you think of that? It's all right. I heard you made a mistake in the song. Oh. You gotta love Thank it. You, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You gotta love it. <laughs> because when you start becoming that, amen, then you start thinking, amen, well, you know what, God, man, I wrestled God and I won. No, God let you win. Yeah. God let you win. God didn't want to crush you. Oh. God did not want to crush your spirit, but he also didn't want to give you an easy way out because you know that the struggle is real, that it, it, it will become part of you, that you will have it ingrained in you to say, I'm not giving it. Do you know how long you have to wrestle with God for this? And believe me, amen, there are times amen, that I've seen people, man, they would come and, and they couldn't sing a lick and they would pray and they would fast and then all of a sudden, amen, they could sing and all of a sudden, oh, the whole family was musicians. <laughs> I heard you sing when you came in, bro. You couldn't sing a lick. Don't tell me that all of a sudden, man, that you, that you grew up in a family of musicians and you could not sing. You could not play. And the same people, amen, you know, would, would, want, would have to one day, amen, just humble themselves. Better stay humble, amen, than to get humble. Yeah. Better stay humble than get humble. I've been on both sides of the fence. Yep. I agree, Lord. Better stay humble than to get humble. <laughs> I agree. Because when God humbles you, he humbles you in the most inopportune time when you don't want to get humble. Like, say, in front of the whole fellowship. Amen. <laughs> That's another sermon. <laughs> so it says here, amen, that he, he put that so he'll be mindful, but, but also, amen, for him to be humble because Paul 
when God said, no, that, I'm not going to take that away because that's there to buffet you. That's there to let you know that I'm so bad that you are working for me. That's not a bad thing. You know, because it's one of these things where, you know, some people get so heavenly minded that they're going to work for good. What does that mean? That they're so far up in the clouds that they're like everybody's beneath them. You preach! <laughs> you can't even pronounce Worcestershire. 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 Now everybody's like, Worcestershire, you go, that's why they can't preach. <laughs> Listen. Listen. <coughs> Each and every single one of us, like I said, has a name. We have a tag. We have a label that God wants to use us for. Jacob, amen, found himself by himself in the most troublesome times, facing, amen, his own brother, knowing that his brother did not want to give him a pat in the back, did not want to come up to him and say, Jacob, bro, what's up? I miss you, man. Bring it in. But yet, had a sword in his army, and I'm sure he gave the order, said, hey, we're going to take him out. But let me finish the end of that story. Jacob prayed, asked the Lord to intervene, the Lord not only intervene, man, but change Jacob's life. Change his name, so no longer that, then change the heart of Esau. So when they met face to face, Esau hugged him and said, what's up, man? He said, hey, look, my Lord, I mean, I bought you all these gifts. He said, you keep them, brother. I got enough. I got enough. But let me do this for you. But you start, you know, Jacob said, no, nah, nah, let me just pass by myself. He says, all right, go, go, get on. Why? Because when you wrestle, you pray, God, man, your own enemies, your own enemies will like you. Mm. How is that possible? I don't know. All I know, man, that it worked. Mm. That all of a sudden, man, these people that couldn't stand me are now like, hey, what's up, man? You talking to me? <laughs> yeah. How far are you willing to wrestle? Man. Who are you? And are you willing? Are you willing to go to this? Let's bow our heads, Father, I thank you, Lord, this time.